point. Um, all the teams have had gone through their initial testing. Uh, the last ones, of course, yesterday, uh, two different uh, PCR tests uh, separated by a minimum of 12 hours between those uh, tests and quarantine in their rooms in the interim until the test results of the second come out. Um, the volume of tests yesterday with the number of teams that arrived, the outlarges basically yesterday and those that waited to have their Sunday night test until after selection Sunday resulted in a slight delay in getting some test results back uh, yesterday afternoon, which led to a slight delay in some practice times by about an hour in the Indiana Convention Center, but teams were uh, understanding of that process and, uh, and compliant with waiting until they were cleared from quarantine to have their first practice in the Convention Center. The Convention Center has been set up and stood up uh, really just over the last 24, 36 hours with the 12 different practice courts uh, with an athletic training room of great size and, and distancing and, uh, and a spectacular weight room for the teams to utilize as well. Um, a huge space um, you know, with you know, great weight training equipment for them to utilize during their stay here in Indianapolis. So all of that uh, happened quite well. Many of the teams will start to practice off-site today at competition venues um, at, at, at Purdue and at IU and, um, and, and the other uh, competition venues in the city of Indianapolis. Um, Yet uh, today is also, uh, we had a kind of a rough inclement weather day around here yesterday. Um, some rain, some some sleet and hail even, and, and some uh, heavy thunderstorms last night, but that's all cleared out and, and timing was good because today is the first day that teams can utilize Victory Field, uh, a really excellent minor league baseball park that's adjacent to the convention center and the, and the JW Marriott. So starting this morning, um, uh, coaches and teams had the opportunity and will this afternoon uh, to extend the controlled environment to the outside and to have some team activities um, outside uh, in, in that beautiful area um, to get some fresh air and, and weather looks like it'll be decent here in the coming days as well. So that will continue to be an opportunity um, uh, outside for teams to get some fresh air and, and some activity um, and social uh, opportunities out, outside in a healthy and responsible way also. Um, I think Dave, that's what I have for uh, for a general update. Um, and I'll be happy to open it up um, for, oh, one, one, one other one, important one, obviously. So we, we noted the uh, testing um, aggregate numbers yesterday. Um, they are, as of today, uh, 2,300, um, completed tests for all tier one, two, and three individuals that are in the controlled, in or around the controlled environment. Um, there are five positives. Um, that should not be assumed to be team personnel necessarily, because as I mentioned, um, those test results are inclusive of tier two individuals, which include, for example, uh, NCA and event staff, uh, as well as the men's basketball committee, um, but five positives out of 2,300 uh, results. There, there were more tests taken than that. Yesterday I reported, I think, 2,100 collections. Um, we're going to transition here to, uh, to final results rather than just collections, so we know what the results of those collections were. Um, so to date, there are 2,300. Of course, that's pending a lot of testing that was done late in the day yesterday, and then, of course, again this morning. So we'll have updated numbers for you on a daily basis, um, but five positives out of the 2,300 uh, to date. That's it, Dave. I'll turn it back to you and open it up to questions. Thanks, Dan. Uh, in a moment, we'll take questions. I see several hands up. Uh, if you would, when I call on you, um, please make sure you're unmuted and please uh, identify yourself and the affiliation for which you work. So we will start with uh, Adam Zagoria. Good morning, Dan. How are you doing? Good morning, Adam. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Good morning. I'm um, going to try to sneak in two real quick here. You said sure. all 68, all 68. Does that include Virginia being there now, Dan? 
Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. My, my mistake, no, it's 67. Virginia will come in uh, later in the week um, for their game on Saturday. Okay, and secondly, real quick, there was obviously a story yesterday about six officials um, having to be, uh, I guess, sent home. Uh, can you just provide an update on what the status of that is, Dan, and, and how do you find the replacement refs? Did you have a pool of replacement refs, or how did that work? Sure. Yeah, first of all, unfortunate and disappointing situation uh, for everyone involved. Um, as we uh, stated last evening, um, as you note, Adam, um, six officials um, have, have been determined not to be able to work the uh, NCAA championship this year as a result of one positive test and isolation for that official and then five close contacts as determined by the Marion County Public Health Department. Um, and those individuals uh, placed into quarantine. Um, so really, again, disappointing uh, for everyone involved and, and uh, unfortunate. Uh, we did anticipate, like we did with teams, that it's a possibility that we could have positives among officials. So we identified in advance and had approved by the Men's Basketball Committee up to 17 replacement officials um, that were continuing to test uh, over the last seven days and would be available in the unfortunate circumstance that we're faced with now. So four of the six officials um, had been replaced. We brought four replacement officials into Indianapolis. Again, all four of those officials had been testing seven consecutive days, uh, produced those results and uh, started their testing regimen upon arrival in Indianapolis last night, quarantining now, and uh, we'll be able to work the championship once they clear those uh, tests and then continue to test daily throughout their stay here in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there were some pretty veteran experienced officials in that group. Are you concerned that those four uh, have been replaced and are you able to say which which four were replaced? Yeah, I, I can't uh, say who, who the four were right now, Adam, but uh, again, those uh, we identified, as you know, 60, in, uh, 60 officials that were initially invited to work the championship um, and then an additional 17, all of whom had been evaluated uh, throughout the entire season, nominated by conferences, evaluated by J.D. Collins and his staff um, to be tournament-worthy officials. As you know, normally we have 109 officials that work the NCAA championship, so even going above that 60 is still well within what we would have in a normal year um, as replacements. So we're very confident uh, they are outstanding officials and will do a great job for the tournament. Thanks, Dan. Good luck. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate you. Dan Wolken, please go with your question. Yeah, Dan, to follow up on uh, Adam's uh, question there, I, I just want to clarify that the officials who were contact traced, they cannot work the NCAA tournament at all. Is that correct? They're that, out. Is correct. that is correct, Adam. I mean, Dan, excuse me. Um, so the contact tracing was done by the Marion County uh, Public Health Department, as was, um, you know, a, a arranged uh, months ago in, in, throughout the process of determining the medical protocols for this tournament um, and would require a quarantine period that would um, extend long enough that participation in this tournament would not be possible. Can, can you pinpoint where the failure was in, in this situation? I mean, there was a report that the hotel rooms for the officials weren't ready when they came in, which, which seems like that would be a bit of a surprise given how diligent you guys have been in preparing for this thing. Uh, there was a report they were allowed to, they, somebody signed off on them to go out to dinner. Can you shed any light on just kind of where things broke down on this? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's appropriate to, to, you know, to comment on that, Dan. Um, you know, accommodations were arranged for, um, you know, like any large scale event, uh, sometimes things happen on time, sometimes they happen slightly delayed. Um, everyone's responsibility is to, you know, is to, make their own decisions to be uh, safe and healthy and ready to participate. And um, again, this is a virus that we don't control. It controls us, not just from an event standpoint, but from an individual standpoint. Um, you know, we try to put safeguards in place um, to protect everyone's health and safety and the integrity of the event. Um, but it can't be perfect. It's not going to ever be perfect in a pandemic. And so Again, as I mentioned, it's an unfortunate and disappointing circumstance for all involved, but um, I don't think that there's, you know, uh, a, a, something that can be pinpointed as a kind of uh, failure here. It's just an unfortunate set of circumstances. 
Thank you. Uh, Darius, please go with your question. Hey, Dan, how are you? Darius Johnson from Fox 59 and CBS4 in Indianapolis. Um, I would love to be able to talk to you just to be able to know, are there any games that any of these um, referees were a part of recently before coming here, whether they've had any contact with the teams or anything like that, to where there may be a concern for any of those players or any staff? Yeah, Darius, thanks for the question. Um, the referees, um, the, the one positive uh, ref referee um, did work a couple of conference tournament games over the weekend. Um, the uh, local contact tracers there, as well as the Marion County Health Department, have reviewed um, the, the risk of exposure there and has determined that it doesn't have any impact on the, uh, the teams of which participate in those games. If you could just talk really fast, just a follow-up question to that. You know, obviously this is something that everyone will be looking out for. As you said, we're in a pandemic, things will not be perfect. If you could just speak to the numbers, um, we all would hate to see things go down the drain, but if there's a chance, how many cases could potentially derail things or cause you all to maybe go back to the drawing board to maybe see if you can get some more plans in place or just, you know, really strengthen people to practice safety? I'm not sure I completely understand your question, but um, but I will say this, Darius, and then you're welcome to have a follow-up as well. Yeah, you know, we've been planning this event for months, uh, really, you know, going back to last summer, and and then specifically here in Indianapolis since November, um, and you know, and more even specifically since January, we have had protocols in place now for months. Um, much of all of this has been anticipated, which is why we have contingency plans. Um, with the Marion County Department of Public Health, um, with the NCA uh, Medical Advisory Group. Um, it's why we've had replacement policy for teams, for officials. We have very clearly defined and communicated protocols in place for team travel, testing, um, how teams operate within this controlled environment uh, and physical distancing and masking. Um, and, and frankly, you know, very feel I feel very good about how it's going so far. Um, you know, the teams have been uh, very cooperative. Uh, they understand the challenges. They've lived the challenges throughout the entire regular season. And so, um, you know, we're, things are going quite well right now, but no one's laying their guard down. Um, no one's making any assumptions about the lack of challenges going forward. But, um, so far, so good. The teams are having a great experience too, which is incredibly important. Um, but health and safety is gonna continue to be our biggest priority uh, and, and also getting teams to their first game and, and games beyond so that we can have 67 games competed and determine a really worthy national champion. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thanks, Darius. Rich, please go with your question. Dan, of the five positive tests, I'm sorry, Rich and I with Channel 13 WTHR in Indianapolis. Of the five positive tests, do you have any players or coaches at this time with a positive test? Um, Rich, we, we're not going to divulge uh, individuals. Um, we're just not uh, at liberty to do so due to HIPAA rules. Um, so uh, all I can report is, is the aggregate numbers. Um, and again, an assumption shouldn't be made um, to your specific question about any individuals um, or even any groups because the overall testing numbers include both official travel parties of the teams as well as uh, working staff and committee members. So institutions may um, at their own discretion divulge test results uh, of, of in individuals uh, should they feel that that's appropriate, um, but the we, we won't be able to, uh, to share that information today or, or otherwise. Tonight is the deadline at 6 p.m. for any replacement teams. Do you anticipate at this point having to make any replacements? We are not anticipating right that right now, but it, you know, again, we're living in a pandemic, so we do take things day to day and even hour to hour, but fortunately, uh, we're not aware of any situations that were, were uh, result in a replacement team coming in. And finally, Dan, you've, you've somewhat addressed this, but do you feel that the referees made any mistake in their protocols 
that led to them being eliminated uh, through the COVID testing and contact tracing? I, I don't think it's appropriate uh, to comment on that, Rich. I, I wasn't there. I don't know that I have full information to be able to comment on that. I will say this, that throughout the entire season, uh, everyone involved with this great game of basketball has made incredible sacrifices and commitment to, to doing things in a healthy and safe way. And that includes the referees. Um, I think a lot of us had concerns going into the season that, that officials who travel uh, independently and, and work on multiple days, you know, maybe among the higher risk individuals around the game, just by the very nature of their work and um, the credit to them individually and to, to them collectively as a group of professionals, that is not at all what we saw during the regular season. Um, we saw very few uh, games impacted uh, by positive tests from, from officials. So um, I'm not commenting on this situation because I don't know enough information to do so, nor would it be appropriate, but I think it's important to put it in context that uh, referees have made great sacrifices uh, throughout the season. I, I know we'll continue to throughout the postseason, and we're appreciative of their efforts. Thank you, Dan. You bet, Rich. Pat, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, Dan. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Uh, two, two quick ones. First one, do you have any more test results still to come in before that 6 o'clock deadline, or is, is all the testing hay in the barn, so to speak? No, we will have a bunch of results still, Pat, that will come in um, come in today. We have teams, for example, that um, you know arrived yesterday that are still awaiting their second uh, PCR test results, uh, which will get them out of quarantine to be able to have their first practice today. Um, that won't happen until later this afternoon or even early evening, depending on when the team arrives. So we've got an awful lot of test results um, still pending to hear today. Okay. Thank you. And then the, the other question, just to somewhat alluded to, but uh, any concern about the dilution of the quality of the officiating? Because some of the names that have been put out there are some of the more prominent officials in the game. You feel like you're going to have high quality officiating crews for your games? Yeah, I very much do. Uh, again, you know, um, we, we, you know, we, there are a lot of really good officials that agreed to work this championship among the 60. Um, but we had identified another 17 of NCAA tournament quality officials that frankly would uh, be candidates to work all the way through the regionals or even the final four. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Pat, as I think you know, normally we have 109 officials that work the entire tournament. We had to, to narrow that scope this year to 60 just because of the unusual nature of having this all in a controlled environment in one city. Uh, but if you extrapolate that, uh, you know, 77 that were identified and approved um, as a, an additional 17 as replacement officials, you're still way within the number of the, that we use on an annual basis of, of 109. So it's a great opportunity for some additional officials uh, due to an unfortunate circumstance, but we're very confident we'll have an outstanding staff for the, for the tournament. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Pat. Hi, Nancy. Please go ahead with your question. Thanks for doing this, Dan. Um, two questions for you. First, um, do you has the NCAA made a decision yet on the possibility of Sister Jean coming along with Loyola? And then, second question: You mentioned Victory Field, but I'm I'm curious. You know, we've seen with NBA and other bubble type situations, athletes talking about um, the struggle it is for them mental health wise. And I'm curious what the NCAA has done. You know, if if you've got a team that makes the Final Four, they could be in Indianapolis for three and a half weeks. And you know how you're accounting for some of the the concerns that there might be in terms of mental health. Sure. Yeah, we understand that Sister Jean is interested in coming. Um, we're working with Loyola, you know, to help to support that. Um, I'm not aware of the specific details, Nancy, but of course. You know, that would be fantastic for both Loyola, for Sister Jean, and for the tournament um, to have her in Indianapolis. So we'll do everything we can to accommodate her um, you know, if, she, if she does make it here. Um, and happy to report more as, as I learn more, but uh, that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish now with Loyola. Um, yeah, Victory Field is very much um, in the outdoor opportunities is very much uh, part of our plan to try to uh, provide opportunities for wellness and, and mental health, uh, you know, it's during this unusual uh, uh, experience here in Indianapolis. Um, 
we heard loud and clear from coaches and others that getting outside some was really important. So we're providing that opportunity. Teams will also have the opportunity to be outside, of course, when they go to their competition venues and, and practice and come and go in that way. Um, and, you know, frankly, the, the, the Indiana Convention Center is about a 600,000 square foot, uh, six block facility that is massive. I mean, we have, we have walking uh, uh, maps for exercise that go more than a mile in, in, in just one direction. So we've been mindful of that. We've got some things planned, Nancy, for teams that advance uh, to do more, um, including activities outside, uh, such as um, in controlled environments, such as Top Golf and the Indianapolis Zoo and things like that. So teams that will have a more extended stay here will have some more kind of entertainment uh, options that uh, that will be a good break of things for for student athletes. It's really hard to do that with 68 teams in such a short amount of time this week. So the options are more limited to the victory field experience. Um, but uh, that, that and, you know, that that's the uh, that's the plan at this point. And as we have fewer teams and more opportunity, there'll be more uh, oppor opportunity and options outside and with other things going forward. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. Steve, please go ahead with your question. Thanks. There was another report, Alex, that said that y'all have kind of adjusted, made a change in when teams could start practicing after arriving at Indianapolis. I guess it impacted Iona for one for one example. I was just wondering what went into that decision regarding the 12 hour thing rather than two separate days. And also I just wanted to make sure the officials who did who were removed from the tournament, are they in quarantine or were they sent home or just what was the situation with those six? Yeah, well, to your first question, Steve, um, uh, you know, any and all decisions around uh, quarantine and, and testing have been developed by the NCA Medical Advisory Group um, of team physicians and medical experts and approved by the Marion County Public Health Department. Um, you know, the reporting around the 12 hours, you remember that you know, teams before they even arrive in Indianapolis have seven consecutive daily tests. Um, so they come in with a high level of confidence of safety and health. Upon arrival, there are two PCR tests that are required um, and, and in quarantine and hotel rooms in between those two tests. Um, they uh, were in, intended initially to be on different days, calendar days, uh, and minimally 12 hours between those tests. Um, we, when, when you add the operational side of bringing 68 teams in and the various number of uh, times of those arrivals of teams, some of them after midnight coming from the West Coast or due to delay in travel, um, the medical advisory group, uh, medical professionals, not operations folks, made the decision that that the 12 hours uh, could be on the same calendar day if the arrivals were late. It's consistent with the timing of uh, of all of the other protocols and arrival, and um, and so that 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 is just a practical adjustment of a medical pro process and protocol that was put in place by experts um, and has been followed to a T. Um, the second question was about the officials. Um, could you just restate so I don't misspeak? I just wanted to make sure, were they sent home or are they quarantined in Indianapolis? Or I just wanted to clarify what happened with what, where they, where they are now. If they're right, right. In okay. Indianapolis or home. Yep. Sorry. So the one official who's positive is, is, uh, in isolation, of course, and the other five officials quarantine, all of that um, it has to be arranged and monitored by the Marion County Public Health Department. Um, the NCA's obligation, if, if that uh, isolation or quarantine period has to take place in Indianapolis and there's any expense involved with that, that the NCA would take care of those expenses, of course, as they were invited to work uh, for us. Um, but in terms of the compliance with the quarantine or the isolation, uh, that's not the responsibility of the NCA, it is the responsibility of the Marion County uh, Public Health Department. So I, I don't know where that all stands exactly, Steve, in terms of 
of that compliance and, and where or how that will take place. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, Adam, go ahead. Hey, Dan, I know you love talking about this official uh, story. Just, just one final one. You said, as I understand it, four of the six are out of the tournament. Is it correct that the other two um, could still officiate games and they are, or what is the status of the other two? Are they in quarantine now or? Yeah, no, the, the, the six, the six are not going to work the tournament, unfortunately, Adam. Um, but the uh, uh, JD Collins and, and the committee have made the decision uh, only to replace four of them. We already had an, an extra number of officials among the 60 um, to be able to manage all of the games of the tournament. You know, we built in, um, uh, we have standby officials, for example, as I think, you know, at every single game. So it, you know, results in, in maybe a couple of more assignments for the uh, other officials that were in that group of 60. So that's the reason for not replacing all six and the determination just to replace the six with four. Um, so uh, we still have a very, a very good staff and, and plenty of officials to work the championship. Does that answer your question? So all, none of those six will officiate any games. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thanks, Dan. You bet, Adam.